This is Sky Tour News for April 22nd. I'm Amanda Curran. Today, in 1056, a supernova explosion creates the Crab Nebula. The super explosion of what is now called the Crab Nebula was first observed July 5, 1054, by Chinese astronomers, and the final observation in the constellation of Taurus occurred on this date in 1056. The supernova became about four times brighter than Venus at its brightest, with a peak apparent brightness of about minus 3.5 magnitude, and was visible in daylight for the next 23 days. On this date, a Chinese astronomer slash astrologer, Yang Wei Ti, reported the guest star had become invisible, which is an omen of the departure of the guest. It was visible in the day like Venus, with pointed rays in all four directions. The color was reddish-white. Wei Ti also pointed out that within its first two months, the star had become a yellow color. This phenomenon is now called a supernova, an exploding star which is temporarily much brighter than any other object in the sky apart from the sun. A supernova occurs at the end of a star's lifetime when its nuclear fuel is exhausted and its mass is no longer supported by the release of nuclear energy. If the star is particularly massive, then its core will collapse and will release a huge amount of energy. This will cause a blast wave that ejects the star's envelope into space. The Crab Nebula is also known as M1 as it is the first on the Messier list and can be seen near Zeta Tauri. Today, in 1972, Apollo 16 astronauts drive across the moon. Apollo 16 was the 10th manned mission in the United States Apollo Space Program and the first to land in the Lunar Highlands. It was crewed by Commander John Young, Lunar Module Pilot Charles Duke, and Command Module Pilot Ken Maddington, with Young and Duke spending 71 hours on the lunar surface. The pair conducted three extravehicular activities, or moonwalks, totaling 20 hours and 14 minutes, in which they drove the lunar roving vehicle 26.7 kilometers across the surface of the moon. Their second traverse occurred on this date in 1972, in which they drove south-southeast to a Mars sampling area near the Cinco Craters on Stone Mountain. The crew then drove in a northwesterly direction, making stops near Stubby and Wreck Craters, and during the last leg, they headed north to the experiment stations and the lunar module. The second extravehicular activity lasted 7 hours and 23 minutes, and the distance traveled by the lunar rover vehicle was 11.1 kilometers. Young and Duke collected 211 pounds of lunar samples for return to Earth, and later samples of the Dakar's formation and the Cayley formation disproved a hypothesis that the formations were volcanic in origin. Today in 1982, the launch of the STS-3. STS-3 was NASA's third space shuttle mission and was the third mission for the Space Shuttle Columbia. It launched today in 1982 and landed eight days later on March 30th. The primary objectives of the flight were to continue testing the Canada Arm Remote Manipulator System and to carry out extensive thermal testing of Columbia by exposing its tail, nose, and top to the sun for varying periods of time. The crew found that prolonged exposure to the sun caused the cargo bay doors to warp slightly, preventing them from closing fully. Rolling the orbiter to balance temperatures around the orbiter resolved the issues. In addition, in its payload bay, Columbia again carried a DFI package, an OSS-1, which consisted of a number of instruments mounted on the Space Lab pallet intended to obtain data on the near-Earth environment and the extent of contamination caused by the orbiter itself. 
Experiments were also carried in the shuttle's mid-deck lockers, which included an electric phoresis equipment verification test experiment to study the separation of biological components and a monodispersed latex reactor experiment to produce uniform micrometer-sized latex particles. Columbia made 130 orbits and traveled 3,300,000 miles during its 8-day, 4-minute, 45-second flight. This is Sky Tour News. I'm Amanda Kerr.